Hello everyone. In this video, we'll learn about affine transformations. You all know about matrices. They multiply a vector to produce a new vector. You can think of that vector as a point in space. These points trace out a square, for example, or a more complicated shape. The matrix transforms all of these points to create a new shape. In this case, a horizontally scaled version of the old shape. Each matrix encodes a different transformation, a scale, a reflection, a shear, or rotation. But how do all of these things fall out of the same matrix? Let's look at each element in turn. We'll start with the identity matrix. This does nothing at all. Now if we change the upper left element, it performs a scale in the horizontal or X coordinate. Changing the bottom right element performs a scale in Y. When we make either element negative, it produces a reflection. The upper right entry corresponds to a horizontal shear. And the lower left is a vertical shear. That's it. But wait, if these entries just scale and shear, where do rotations come from? I'll tell you a secret. A rotation is basically just a couple of shears. We start by shearing horizontally, and then vertically by the same amount. Cool, that creates a rotation. This is in fact a popular way to implement image rotations, because all you do is translate each row by a different amount, and then translate each column. In other words, you can do a 2D rotation with just 1D translations of rows and columns, which are fast to compute. So this matrix creates a rotation by two shears, but how can we specify the angle of rotation? The sine function does the trick. It converts from an angle to the right shear amount. But let's look at what happens when we change the angle. The size changes a bit as it rotates. So we need to correct this size change. And it turns out that scaling by the cosine function exactly counteracts this size change. When we put these together, they combine to produce a perfect rotation. Now let's look at 3D matrix transformations. Instead of a square, we now have a cube. And we'll be using a 3 by 3 matrix to transform it. The diagonal entries correspond to 3D scales in X, Y, and Z. And all the rest are shears along the X, Y, and Z axes. There are six shears in total. And we can combine these shears and scales to form rotations about the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X axis. These rotations are sometimes called yaw, pitch, and roll. And you can combine them to orient your airplane in any direction. All right, but there's one transformation that's missing, a translation like this. What's the matrix that performs a 2D translation? This matrix should increase the X coordinate by one since we're sliding to the right. As one example, it should move the origin one unit to the right. But this is impossible since all matrices map the zero vector to itself. This means that two by two matrices cannot do 2D translations. However, there's a trick. Let's add a one at the bottom to make it into a 3D vector. Now try multiplying with this 3D matrix. Voila, we've achieved our desired translation. So here's the animation of that effect. But wait, didn't you just tell me that this matrix performs a 3D shear? Let's take a closer look at what's really going on in 3D. Indeed, this matrix is a shear along the x-axis. But if we hide the rest of the cube, you can see that the top face is just translating. We saw a connection between shears and translations in 2D. A shear translates each of the rows. It's similar in 3D. If we slice the cube into planes, each slice is translated by a different amount during the shear. 
So if we think of our 2D image as the face of the z equals 1 plane, we can now do any 2D matrix transformation and any 2D translation using these elements of the 3x3 three three matrix. This way of representing 2D points as 3D vector is called homogeneous coordinates. And the same thing works in higher dimensions. Here's a 3D translation represented as a 4D matrix. I hope you enjoyed this video on affine transformations.